Alrighty, y'all. What's going on? You see the jersey. You know what time of week it is. It's sit. time for the Sit Down Sports Edition. You know who it is over here, my man Andrew. What's going on, y'all? We're back again, and uh, yeah, we're gonna. You already know the drill. We're gonna run over week four. And we're gonna uh, talk about what we thought, what we liked, what we didn't like. Yeah. What were some of the surprises? Because there was a. There's a few. We're calling this COVID week this week. Yeah, COVID <laughs> weeks for sure. It, it almost impacted uh, three games. Impacted two games. Um, one game didn't even get played. Another game. Right. I didn't, Team lost to start quarterback, so we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. Sure. Oh, yeah. So, where do you want to start? You want to start Thursday night? Start Thursday night football. You got the Broncos, Jets, 37 28 Broncos win. Um, a little more high scoring than I think most people thought it would be. Agreed. Um, but, I mean, I'm pleasantly surprised at the outcome. I'm a Broncos fan, so seeing the offense pull together against a JV team, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, it's, it's an expected win in my book, two possession game. Um, Sam Darnold did pretty well though, for he did. all things considered. Actually, I was, I was actually impressed by him. He actually, mm -hmm. uh, granted, you know, Denver, your guys' defense is so depleted. And yeah, you all right injuries, now yeah. That, you know, you guys damn near have a TV defense out there too. Sure. You know, it's a lot of second string people out there. So, you know, I think the one thing which is going to be tough, because we had talked about this at the start when we all started this, we're going to talk about how your defense is going to have to win you games. Yeah. Now your offense has to win you games. Yeah. You're gonna have to just outscore your opponents and luckily, that's exactly what happened. Yeah, and our, our pass rush was able to get there. Mm -hmm. Bradley Chubb had a two and a half sack game, which Easy. is big for that camp. Yeah, big for him. Yep. Um, hopefully that builds his confidence for weeks to come. Uh, but the Jets are 0-4, uh, and I don't think there's a win in sight. No, and they, their schedule only gets harder. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm surprised Adam Gaze is not the fight. You wanna know what I think? I wouldn't, because the way the Jets do it, if you look back, you know, they always keep the coach for the whole year. They never fire their coach in the middle of the year. Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do, start. here's my prediction. <laughs> He's gonna make the year, and then they're gonna fire him, probably. Yeah. And I don't want anybody to ever get fired, but. No, of course like, not, but if you can't do your job right, damn. you know, yeah. in any industry, if you don't do your job, if you're gonna you're gonna get let go. And, and unfortunately, there's a, the head coaching positions in the NFL are, are very in demand. People, there are talented people that can fill that spot. Yep. Um, and if you're that, not one of them, then who is that running back for Denver? 28. Your backup running back? Uh, Royce Freeman. Yeah, the heck of a game. He did have a good game. Uh, Melvin Gordon had a good game as well. He did. Uh, we we rushed as a team for over 150 yards. That's good. Um, you're gonna need that. Big deal. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with your quarterback. Right. Uh, right now. Drew Lock should be back next week. Okay. Um, if he's not, then he'll be back the week after. What, they, they play the Patriots next week, Yeah, the Patriots week, right? this yeah. next week, yeah. So assuming Cam Newton's not playing, because oh, he's, yeah, he's, we'll got, see. he's got to take two weeks, yeah. most likely. Um, that sh might be a tight game. It could be. I don't know. But watch it, that page, we'll get to the Patriots later. Yeah. But that defense is actually pretty damn good. <laughs> they, they played really well for most of the game. Yeah. Yeah, um, and, we'll, and we'll get there, you know, because I think Belichick figured out something there in terms of Mahomes, what not to do. For sure. Uh, let's go to Ravens football team. Uh, Ravens took it pretty handily, 31-17. Not surprised. Uh, Ravens are 3-1, and one, and the football team is winning their division. Actually, no, they're not anymore because the Eagles won. Yeah. Um, but they were leading their division at 1-3. Talk about a dumpster fire for division. It's so bad. What is it? Eagles are 1-2-1. One, and one. Eagles 1-2-1, one, and one. they're Washington leading the division. Is leading the division of 1-2-1. One, and one. Washington and Dallas are 1-3, and three, and then obviously the Giants are over. Oh my um, but the Ravens did what we expected. They're good at beating bad teams, but can they beat good teams? They haven't beat a good team yet this year. They only mm -hmm. played one, and it was in the Kansas City Chiefs. So. You wonder what's crazy with Baltimore. This is something that I just learned when I was kind of studying them. They actually they put up over 20-plus points in the last 27 games. Yep. And that's before the Warriors. That's the active, that's, that's the longest active street, right? That's I mean, that's crazy. when you're talking about Joe Flacco. Yeah. Um, and Joe Flacco is a wash in New York right now, so that's that's been a long time. So that's, you know, that's something that the Ravens can hang their hat on, you know? At least for giving sure. them 20 points every single game for that defense. Yeah. A exactly. lot of games, that'll be enough. For sure. You know, that's that enough. defense can show up just yeah. enough, it'll be good. Exactly. Um, but, they, I mean, they beat the Browns week one. Browns, Browns early in the season are not typically very good <laughs> either. Um, they were pretty rough that game. So I mean, you beat a bad Browns team in week one at that point. Um, they beat the Texans who just fired the head coach. Um, and they, GM. Right, they lost, <laughs> the, they lost to the Chiefs and they beat the football team. Like, 
all right, show me something that is going to impress me. Right, exactly. Um, can you be a good football team? Mm-hmm. And they'll have to be, they'll have, they're going to verse the Steelers twice this year. So, and they're going to verse, uh, I believe they verse Indianapolis later this year as well. Yep. Which is going to be a big test. Indianapolis has really turned the heads now. Yeah, they're um, actually kind of coming around a little bit. The defense bit is crazy. Yeah. The defense is crazy good. Yep. Um, but yeah, the, Ra- the Ravens got to be a good team. Which is, we expected that, you know, they were one of our, our higher picks at mm-hmm. the beginning of the season, you know, because they, they, like we had talked about at the beginning of the season, they have all the same pieces, pretty much everything exactly the same, yep. so we, this is what we expected. Right. Um, but like you had said, let's, uh, let's wait and see when they play a good team, and let, then let's see what they're made of. That's it. If they played Kansas City, and it didn't go very well for them, and Lamar Jackson, looked, he looked very, uh, very ordinary. Yeah, for sure. Looked very ordinary, so we'll see. Uh, Bucks, Chargers, this was a shootout, but... Uh... There was a stat in this game. Tom Brady is 43. Justin Herbert's 22. <laughs> Tom Brady won his first Super Bowl before Justin Herbert was in kindergarten. Yeah. Um, Justin Herbert was looking like he was going to get the win. It did. The defense kind of blew it for him a little bit. Uh, he did throw a pick at the end of the game, mm-hmm. which stinks because you put your young quarterback in a position to come back against a guy like Tom Brady. Yeah. It didn't work out. Uh, Bucks won 38-31. You know, a couple things I, I took away from this game. Number one, Tom Brady impressed me, but he also made me nervous because, again, those pick sixes Picks. where you can't – and on the same exact – on that on little seven-yard like, out, same exact thing, bro. It's I just don't know if he necessarily has the arm strength to, to push it out there in time for it to not get undercut every yeah. single time. It, I mean, it happened twice, literally the exact same way. He really, he really needs those guys to be wide open. Or, he, fit those or he needs those people to come back to the ball. Sure. Which maybe that's what he's expecting them to do. I'm not sure. but um, um, For the first time in Tom Brady's career, he threw five touchdown passes to five different wide receivers. That's insane. That's uh, ridiculous. That, yeah, that's crazy. That's for the first nasty. time in his career, he's yep. 43. Cam Brady, with that touchdown pass that he had, that touchdown reception, he became fourth all-time in franchise history mm-hmm. in terms of uh, touchdown receptions, okay. which is slept on. Not a lot of people know that. Cameron Bray, he produces. He's good. He and, produces. And he, he, they need to use him more, I think. Well, he will help fill the gap when O.J. Howard's going to be gone. He's out for the year, torn Achilles. Oh, really? Yeah, he's out for the year. Oh, so Cameron really? Bray's going to get a bigger role. Um, wow. Which, how did I not know that? <laughs> yeah, that just came out today. Oh, um, really? He left the game early in, I believe, mm. the third or fourth quarter. And... Um, Torn Achilles is out of the year. That's tough. Yeah. That's um, tough. But Justin Herbert looked really good. Yeah. Um, he is probably the best quarterback in the NFL to not get a win yet. Agreed. Because, um, I mean, Tyra Taylor was in week one. He won against the Bengals. Yep. Justin Herbert hasn't won yet. He's really good. He's going toe-to-toe with some studs. Pat Mahomes. Yep. Tom Brady. Yep. Um, who do they have on the week in between? Ooh. I'm having a hard time remembering, but yeah, I'm not sure. you're right. He is going toe to toe with a lot of these guys. And he's he's making big plays, he is. big plays. He was probably the best rookie total this this week if his team could pull out the W. Yeah, I would agree. Um, it, yeah, it's just unfortunate that his defense, you know, uh, uncharacteristically gave up 38 points. Yeah, and on top of that, I'm talking about uncharacteristically, you know, the the. Buccaneers, their defense, they were they were giving up a lot of deep balls, which they normally don't give up. Mm-hmm. You know, and he really kind of exposed a couple holes in that secondary that they needed to get tightened up. The reason they don't really give up that many deep balls is because the pass rush usually gets there before mm-hmm. a deep play can develop. You got that that front seven is nasty. So when then they get pressure constantly, you're not going to have enough time to look deep. It Nor doesn't, can you it step doesn't work into out. it you can get it. Right, exactly. You know? Justin Herbert's that kind of guy. He's going to make a move. He's going to move around. He's going to move out mm-hmm. of the pop. He's going to just launch it and let his receiver go make a play and he did um now, several times and i think one of the things that's helping you know herbert right now is the fact that he doesn't have any film on him yet mm-hmm. he doesn't have much film on him so people don't really know what his tendencies are yet sure. only he does so you can't really study him yet right. like you could study a tom brady or a patrick mahomes or mm-hmm. lamar jackson right so i'm curious to see what he does towards the end of the year when there's more film to study sure. on him to kind of figure out what his tendencies are yeah really see what he's made of but i think the chargers are one of those teams i picked them this past week um i think they're gonna be one of those teams where they're gonna break out at some point and they're like there's i think when they get their first win they're gonna win a lot in a row yeah 
because they're going to start feeling their stride. They yeah. felt their stride in this game, mm. but they're going to start feeling it more and more and more and more and more. Uh, I'd be very surprised if they're not a wild card team, even at one and three. I would agree. I would agree. I could definitely see that. Uh, surprisingly too close. Seahawks got away with a nail biter. The score is a little closer than it should be. The mm -hmm. Dolphins got a garbage time touchdown yeah. at the end there. Yeah. Uh, but thirty-one twenty-three. Seahawks took it. I'll tell you what, that uh, that Dolphins defense, they were uh, they looked good most of the day. They had a fire under their butt there. They were uh, they were getting after it. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were they were holding Russell Wilson down. I mean, obviously he's going to do what he does. Right. He's, he's going to get. You he's going to tire you out. And by the fourth quarter, he put up two touchdowns and, and mm -hmm. you know they won the game. I I was. Saying to the people that I was watching the game with, the Dolphins kept kicking field goals. Mm -hmm. They were close to the end zone, but they kept kicking. Gotta capitalize. I said, you, you gotta, at some point, you have to say, if field goal's not enough, we have to go for it. Um, and I think at the end, that ended up biting them in the butt because they made it so close so many times. But again, mm -hmm. like that, that Seahawks defense is very good at keeping you out of the end yep. zone. They'll give up the yard, but they'll keep you out of the end zone. Um, Dolphins gotta try it. Go for it on those next. Few. You know, and that was the thing, like you had said there, Angel, what surprised me. You know, it's um, you're seeing it a lot now. A lot of scared decision making. You know, a lot of teams are, are making scared right. decisions. It's like, are you gonna win or are you gonna lose? Because you're you're gonna lose if you kick field goals against the Seahawks. Every drive that you get, yeah, the right you already know that. Why do why do you not just sac maybe sacrifice three points and try for seven? You know, that could be a deal. I think make it break. after the third field goal, when you have nine points, but that's it, you gotta start considering. Right. You have to start saying, okay, we, we're not going to win by just getting field goals. We've got to get into the end zone. We've got to make a play. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick um, had zero touchdowns in this game uh, and multiple interceptions. I believe it was round two. Yeah, we can't have that. Um, when do we start to see Tua? Right. When do you put Tua into the game? Rookie quarterbacks have been doing really well this season. Joe Burrow's looking good. Justin Herbert's looking good. When do you start putting – putting this guy in the game, seeing what he can do. Dolphins have two first round picks this year. What, how, you gotta, if two, if you start two and he doesn't look the way you want him to, or he's getting hurt too early, or something along those lines, you still got two first round picks. Your team's not bad. Right. You don't have a bad football. Defense is, it looked good in this game, but that, that's out of the order. That was an anomaly. Yeah. Um, and sure, you need a few more pieces on offense. But really, that quarterback plays was taking out, taking out the wind of the sail. Because yep. when Ryan Fitzpatrick does well, you win games. When he doesn't, you lose. So what does that tell you? It's a quarterback. I think they gotta get two in the game, and get up to the reps. Oh man. Yeah, it's it's a good point to make. You know, in the question, you know, that I'm kind of thinking to myself, similar to you, Andrew. You know, it's when. You know, mm -hmm. what is the right time? Is there ever a right time? Sure. You know, so it's, are you trying to pick up, pick an easy game for him to go in there and get his feet wet? Sure. What you, I don't know what they're thinking necessarily, but. And I think it was right for them not to start him this week against Seattle. That would be tough. <laughs> right. You're setting your guy up for failure. You got, you got to think about your rookie's That's confidence a, a little salt. bit. Yeah. Um, but next week, I believe they have, next week they have the 49ers. It's a beat up defense. Um, be it's a big name though. They're two and two. They just lost to the Eagles. I mean, I think maybe you throw Tua into that game and say, "Listen, make some plays." This is not. This is this is a defense that has lost most of its pieces. Doesn't have Joey Bosa. You don't got to worry about him. It's like, let him go in. Let him make some mistakes, but also give him a, give him an environment to thrive. Yeah, I'm with it. I think. Uh... You know, I think now's the time. You know, you're not you're not getting the results you want. So, yeah. like we had said, if you're not doing your job, somebody else is gonna do it better. Yeah. So, I think, yeah. Get the young guys some legs. Hey, I predicted week five. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got Vikings, Texans. Texans mm -hmm. fired their head coach after this game. That's how bad. Head coach and GM, same yep. person. Um, Vikings took it 31-23. Um, I'm not surprised by this. Um, I, I, the, the Texans put up a decent amount of points. Uh, Vikings defense finally showed up. Right. Made some plays, did what they were supposed to. Um, Dalvin Cook had a day, oh. over 130 yards, I believe three touchdowns. Yes. Um, God, you, if you can run the ball that well, you can pass the ball. Either. Right. And they, and they, they showed that today. Justin Jefferson had a day. Um, they really, they really just showed up. It's, uh, I'm done picking the Texans. 
Yeah. I'm done picking them. <laughs> I picked them three weeks in a row and they beat me in the ass all three times. I'm done. Um, again, I feel bad for Deshaun Watson. That dude is, he is running for his life he every is. single play. Every play that man is running for his life. Um, and like you had said, Dalvin Cook went off. Mm-hmm. Absolutely feasted. Yeah. The Texans' rush defense, I don't think it, it left this week being any better, but I believe they were worse than the NFL in rushing yards given up. And I think that. I, yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. I was so, great. Yep. Um, nothing too surprising there in my eyes. Uh, I think the Texans have done. That that division that division is the Colts are starting to show up. Um, at this point, maybe the first time the Texans get a win is when they go against the Jags. They're not gonna beat the Titans. Man, Texans going woof. <laughs> I, I just I I don't think they're I don't they're not an 0 and 14. No. They're not. No. Which is why I think firing a head coach is a good position to, 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 to look into. Because usually when you have a talented roster and it's not performing, something's going on. It's usually top. coaching. Right, right. Um, same thing with the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. Coaching's not good. I don't know why, but I don't know what happened to Mike McCarthy, but it's not working. Nope. Deshaun Watson, they have three good receivers. They got Kenny Stills. Um, Will Fuller. Oh, that's right. Yeah, um, and they, they got one other guy. I can't, I can't remember what his name is. But they, they're they not... Oh, Brandon Cooks. Oh, holy smokes. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Not Brandon Cooks. Randall Cobb. They do have Cooks, though. They do? Yes. All right, great. So, so they got four, they have four receivers. All these guys are good receivers. Running back's not bad. David Johnson's doing pretty in the middle mm-hmm. of the road. He's, he's serviceable. Your defense should be better than it is. You got J.J. Watt. Um, I mean, I, yeah, I guess when that's I think really about it, not much have. else. Yeah, um, that's really it. You're not a no in 14. You should have beat the Vikings. Yep. And they didn't. Yep. Well, and again, something I didn't think about, which I should have thought about, is Dalvin Cook. That dude is on a mission. Contract year. He's trying to get paid. Yep, and he will, whether it's by oh, the Vikings or not. Yeah, which it probably won't be by the Vikings. If they haven't paid him yet, I don't think they're going to. Yeah. I don't think they're going to. So. Right, because the price tag gets higher every week. Mm-hmm. Especially when he's performing like that. Um, so we got Saints Lions. Lions had an early lead, blew it. Um, this is first team in NFL history to lose six straight games in which they led ten plus. Uh, what? The defense is bad. You got a defensive head coach. You know what? I heard something that was very interesting. I was actually listening to some talk show this morning. I think it was Get Up, and they were talking about how they don't trust Matt Patricia as a head coach. They think Matt Patricia is forcing the Lions to regress significantly. Because if you think when, when the Lions were with Caldwell, they were progressing every single year. Sure. They were, they were having winning seasons every single year. He had Matt Stafford balling. Mm-hmm. And then Matt Patricia comes in here, and then they've regressed every single year he's been there. This is his second year, and this is, they're terrible. Yeah. They're terrible. I mean, granted, they had that. They should, they should be 2-2. Two and two. Sure. Should be, but should have, could have, would have. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, so. But... Not surprised. I'm honestly surprised by the Saints' record. Two and two. Uh, that's yeah, a bit alarming. They lost to a Raiders team that's very on and off. And they lost to... What was the second loss? Green Bay. Green Bay. I mean, not surprised you lost Green Bay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a little surprised they lost to the Raiders. So, you're, you're halfway through the season. The sample size isn't that big. They're better than a two and two team, definitely. obviously. They're probably the best two and two team in the NFL. Agreed. Um, so I'm not I'm not worried as a Saints fan. I mean, you beat you beat the Lions. I mean, I've been looking at that defense a little bit. Like you gave up 29 points to a Lions yes. team that's not great. I mean, Stafford's a baller, so uh, not too surprising that he puts up points. But also, like you're you're a different caliber team than the Lions are. Right. You shouldn't be giving up. It shouldn't be that close. Yep. Um, and you shouldn't have gotten off to such a bad start where you were losing in the first place. I'm saying, that's exactly um, what I'm saying. Yep. So if the Saints can come out and you know be better every week and do their thing, then I think they'll be all right. Uh, I think they're they're a solid playoff team. Maybe controversial, but keep an eye on Drew Brees. He doesn't look the same. No, I, I think he's in the same tier as maybe Tom Brady, where they're losing a little bit on that arm, losing a little strength there. Um, Tom Brady's just got a billion IQ as a quarterback. Drew Brees just maybe isn't as much as Tom Brady. 
Drew Brees really relied on his arm strength a lot. That's why he got all the passing yards exactly. that he had. Exactly. Um, yep. So where Tom Brady didn't really depend on that. Right. Exactly. Right. So when you lose that arm strength and your num- and the number one wide receiver in the NFL, uh, Michael Thomas. Yep. Which he should be coming back this week. He should be coming back yep. soon. He's very day to day. Um, he's not. <clears throat> if it's not this next week, it'll be the, the one after. But. Um, it's, it's becoming very clear that Drew Brees needs a little more help now at his age. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is a very talented roster. Thank goodness he has Alvin Kamara. Absolutely. That dude is his get out of jail free card. Yep. <laughs> and that offensive line is pretty good. It, keeps, yes. it holds its own. Um, but the door is closing for the Saints. I would agree. Um, you know, what's so funny, a lot of people were very high on the Saints. You sure. know, I never really thought the door was open. I really didn't. It, it never really felt like they were a significant threat. They were good. But, like, it never really felt like they were a significant threat in terms of the league. I think it's just the consistency of, like, I mean, you have Sean Payton, right? You have Drew Brees. You have Alvin Kamara. You have Michael Thomas. It's arguably the best big three in, you know, running back, wide receiver, quarterback going into the season. Sure. Drew Brees comes in. His arm looks a little funny. So now it's like, okay, where do we go from here? We got to lean more into Alvin Kamara. We got to hope Michael Thomas comes back soon. You know, Jared Cook, he's out for a little bit. Like, right. what are we doing? Um, so the Saints really got to try and find some consistency in some area, and I think it's going to be the running game. Um, and just hope, you know, the injury bug doesn't bite. Yeah, which it tends to do. Uh, Browns, Cowboys. <laughs> I'm not surprised. You're probably surprised. I'm not. I don't. Again, it it's one of those things. You, retrospect is a powerful thing. Yeah. You know, I, I watched I watched that game and I was like, why did I do that to myself? That's <laughs> such a dumb pick. You can never trust the Cowboys with anything, dude. It's like the Browns looked really, really good. The Cowboys made them look very good. They looked very good for 50 minutes of the game. The first 10 minutes of the fourth quarter was suspect. That was bad. Oh. They, the defense, they, they were playing very conservative on offense. Mm-hmm. I saw that short, trying to pass the ball a little bit. Baker couldn't hit an open receiver. It was rough. They had to go through. Cowboys made a really long drive out of it in the fourth quarter for about 10 minutes. Um, scored points. You know, they kept putting up points, and it's like, oh, no, what do we do? Baker woke up and said, you know what, like, let's close let's, the door. Let's close the door. Close uh, the door. For a touchdown, got the extra point blocked, but ended up getting two points afterwards anyway. Yo, uh, that's so funny. <laughs> so what people don't understand, as a varsity football official, a field goal is very similar to a punt, where if you kick a field goal and it's short of the goal line, it's it, live. It's 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 very much a live ball where someone can catch it, or if it rolls like around the goal line, which you don't really see it very often because right. you don't see people kicking that short. Mm-hmm. If it lands anywhere, it's as good as a punt. So if someone touches it, it's down right there. Um, so what happened was is the kick got blocked behind the line of scrimmage, went beyond the line. If only a Browns player touched it at that point. It's down where it's touched. Right. Doesn't matter where it is. If it goes into the end zone, it would be a hypothetical touchback, but there's no touchback because it's an extra point, so it should be no good. But a Cowboys player tried to pick it up for some reason. Thought maybe he had a chance, didn't know the rules. As soon as he touched it, now it's live ball. It's a muff. Exactly. It's considered a muff. A person on the Browns picks it up. He's in the end zone. Two points. It's a very Cowboys thing to do. Yeah. It's very odd how, you know, they the Falcons didn't look like they knew the rules <sighs> two weeks ago, and now all of a sudden, they don't know the rules. I'll so. tell you what. Again, you know, we talked about this last week. Don't get hung up with Dak Prescott's numbers because they're really not that impressive. So When it was a close yeah. game, when it was a tie game, 14-14, he had... 140-something passing yards, no touchdowns. That was it. That was it. And he, he ended the game around 500. Here's what I'll say. The Cowboys have an offense that can keep a lead, right? Where you, you give the ball to Zeke, he can hang on to it and do his thing. 
Mike McCarthy, and this is why I say it's coaching, his defense is not good. He needs to understand that. He needs to keep the ball, keep the time of possession, keep his defense off the field, give the ball to Ezekiel Elliott. He doesn't want to do that. He wants to come out firing on all cylinders, and all of a sudden you get a few bad drives in the early game. It happens. Now all of a sudden the Browns are keep scoring touchdowns, keep scoring touchdowns. Right. And all of a sudden they're up 28-14. Exactly. And now you're playing catch-up. And now Dak Prescott throws for 500 yards. So he's, he's getting all these yards because he's playing catch-up. Mm-hmm. But he's playing catch-up because they're not they, the game plan sucks from the beginning. Yeah, and, so, and the other thing, too, is, you know, Dak Prescott doesn't play good when the game is close. He doesn't. Right. He doesn't. I mean... He has to get it close. Every single game where he's had, you know, Dak Prescott has 450-plus pass yards for three games in a row. That's, that's NFL That's because he's playing from down most right. of the Right. He's, he's playing from, like, 15, 20 down every single game. Like, it's not hard. You're playing pre run defense. Just don't give up anything cheap over the top. Okay. I'll take 20 here. I'll take 15 there. I'll take 10 there. And that's where the Falcons got in trouble. Exactly. But the... Browns figured they figured out what to do earlier than the Falcons did. Exactly. They made some mistakes early on, and the head coach was like, "Hold on, I don't want to be Dan Quinn. <laughs> Let's play a little better defense. Let's make this work." And they they made it work. Mm-hmm. So good on the Browns if they can keep up. I mean, forty nine points. If you can put up forty nine points against any NFL team, that's great. The Cowboys um, gave up forty nine points. That is sad. To be fair. That is sad. The defense is terrible. It's awful. And that's how the Browns offense should play. They're a pro bowl offense. Not kidding. You could take the Browns offense, get rid of Baker, because I mean Baker's he's doing better, but he's not he's not a pro bowl quarterback. Nope. Throw in somebody else, that's your pro bowl roster. Jarvis Landry. Odell Beckham, Ngakwe. Austin Hooper. No, he's not there anymore, is he? No, he is. Ngakwe he is. is there. Ngakwe is there. I'm oh, sorry, not Ngakwe, Njoku. Oh, Njoku, in you're Joku. right. Yep, Njoku. Austin Hooper. Like, those are all Pro Bowl caliber players. Kareem and you, Hunt. Kareem Hunt. Nick sucks Chubb. Sucks that Nick Chubb got hurt early on. He's going to be out for at least three weeks now. He's okay. MCL is a good one to yeah. hurt because that one will do his thing. Right. And, and the first report came out and they said it was ankle. I was like, no, nah, that's not ankle. Yeah, I don't think it was uh, I was like, I don't know no. what you guys get an ankle no. from. He immediately grabbed his knee. Um, but that sucks, but he'll be back and he'll be fine. Mm-hmm. And, but they, the Browns have three good running backs now. It's ridiculous. They got Kareem Hunt and uh, there's another young guy. Can't remember what his name is. I'm going to find it right now. He had a few really nasty runs. He's number 30. Uh, his name is Ernest Johnson. 13 attempts, 95 yards. That's gross. The running of that team, they were 40 carries for 307 yards. Oh. That's seven, that's seven and a half yards a carry now. That is... That, that's for the whole team. That is sick. And granted, some of those are big plays, that like trick sick. plays by Odell. Odell's a freak athlete. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm so glad they're finally utilizing him. Put some respect on his name. Exactly. <laughs> like... Trade rumors shut down because he's just absolutely killing it now. Um, and he's, he's really contributing. Yep. Um, if the Browns can keep that up, they are a top tier team in the NFL. Really? I think they're top 10. Cowboys, big trouble. I'll leave it at that. I, I wouldn't say big trouble, but their division's so bad, they can still win it. <laughs> so, we'll see what happens. Um, Jags, Bengals, not too surprising. Joe Burrow gets his first win. Big Burrow. Uh, didn't look Excellent. Nah. Good enough. He had a couple good throws uh, there. But Joe Mixon, 150 yards, three touchdowns. He took over. Did you see that big shot he took when he hurdled that guy and went to the end zone? He got blasted yep. by um, 44 Jack. Yeah. Yeah, Miles Jack. Miles Jack blasted him. I was like, yep. oh, damn. Gosh. <laughs> but, I mean, when you got a guy running the ball like that, it's the same situation as Dalvin Cook. And I think they, they put up very similar points, too. They put up very similar points, too, where, I mean, the Vikings scored 31, Bengals scored 33. Mm-hmm. When you have a running game like that, that's what it does for your exactly. offense. You can make more things happen. I'm angry that they didn't get A.J. Green involved because I had to start him because I had Juju Smith-Schuster and they canceled that friggin' game. Mm. And then A.J. Green caught one pass, which is kind of weird. Um, they're not giving him the ball like, nah. at all. Um, but they're finding ways to make plays, that's which it. is good. Tyler Boyd, freak. Um, Ridiculous. 
and the Jaguars look pedestrian as usual. You know, one thing I thought is interesting, and in, I thought the Bengals exemplified that. They were very patient with the run game. Yep. So if you're paying attention to the start of the game, it really wasn't working that well. Oh. It wasn't working that well up until about halfway through the second quarter, they started wearing them down a little bit. Mm-hmm. They were patient. They sacrificed some drives to get the run game going, mm-hmm. and then it pays dividends. And I think that's a lot of things that NFL teams don't do. They're not patient enough to allow their run game to develop. Yep. Dallas Cowboys, perfect example. Right. They're never patient enough they to let the run game develop. They run the ball three times, it doesn't work, and they're like, oh, forget it, Dallas, throw the ball. Throw the ball for the rest of the game. Okay. Right. You have, you have top, a top three running back in the NFL. I'm saying. And, and you pay them, man. I mean, this year your money's worth. Jeez. Right. It's like buying a Ferrari and just leaving it in the driveway all the time. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do that for? For sure. Uh, let's hop over to the upset of the week, I would say. Yeah. Cardinals Panthers. Uh, Panthers win 31 21. Uh, Kyler didn't look bad, but he didn't look good either. Oh. Um, Cardinals defense is not good right now. I don't know what's happening there. Um, it was just a sad, sad game for the Cardinals, and the Panthers capitalized. But, what are we doing here? I thought one thing that was very interesting to me when I was watching this game was mm-hmm. the fact that that Panthers run game, even without Christian McCaffrey, twenty eight's good. Was working. Twenty eight is good. Work, yeah. Mike Davis, eighty four yards, five point three average, touchdown. What? And Sixteen attempts. It's a good game. Yeah. That's a good game. Yeah. I mean, I mean, hundred sixty eight total rush yards for the team. That's good. On 35 attempts, that's fantastic. And you got a guy like Teddy Bridgewater who typically doesn't make doesn't make mistakes. mistakes. Yeah, I mean, it one INT, but it happens. You know what? 26 for 37, 276 in the air. That's good. That'll do the job. It's good. That'll do the job. Um, and that's the thing, you know. The, I think the Panthers they're gonna make their money if they can keep their style of play flawless in the yeah. sense of don't make mistakes, don't give the ball up and use the weapons that you have available. Don't try to be fancy like you had said before, mm-hmm. right? Keep it simple. simplified. I think Matt Rule, the Panthers head coach, is really getting it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think once he gets Christian McCaffrey back, hopefully next week, maybe in a few weeks, um, he's going to look really good because they are running the ball well without him. Yes. How are they going to run the ball with him? And now they have a change of pace back <clears throat> like Davis, who's good. He's, he's good. Um, I think when Christian McCaffrey comes back, you're going to see a scary Panthers Watch team. out. Um, Watch out. Looking for that wild card run. Especially because um, they seem to be a run, a predominantly run-heavy offense. Obviously, you're going to get a lot of passes. Sure. Because that's the lead. But, you know, a team, in my eyes, a team that can give you 150-plus rush yards yeah. a game, which I think the Panthers are very capable of doing. Sure. That's going to win you a lot of ball games. That's going to win you a ton of ball games. So where do the Cardinals go from here? Last two games flukes, or is this who they are in the first two games are flukes? I'm leaning more towards the, for those first three games being flukes, to be honest. Okay. <clears throat> and the reason why I say that is you look at DeAndre Hopkins' numbers, those were not sustainable numbers. No. He, those he numbers a, were outrageous. He was a freak the first two weeks, and mm-hmm. then the next two weeks, I mean, defense is caught up. And I think Kyle Murray, you know, it's, again, he looks very similar to what he was last year. Mm-hmm. And you see it a lot with quarterbacks that are young, you know, that you don't see a drastic progression. In, mm-hmm. in a change in play style, you know, when they're young, they don't understand it yet. Mm-hmm. And I think the thing with him is that, you know, he shocked people the first two weeks. You know, that shock value got sure. him wins. But I think now teams are ready for it. They, they understand what they need to do. Keep him in the pocket. Don't blitz. Very similar to like a pass from Mahomes. Don't blitz him. Keep him in the pocket. Make, 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 make him make a play. Exactly. Collapse it on top of him and he can't do it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, he can, but not like he was doing. Sure. So. Um, I, I think... Unless he has a moment like Patrick Mahomes did last year, where, I mean, Pat Mahomes was a freak, obviously. Won MVP the previous year, but last year, there was a moment where he said, oh, I didn't learn how to read defense until halfway through last year. <laughs> yeah. And everyone's like, what? Are you serious? And he hasn't lost a game since. Yeah. Literally has not lost a game since. If Kyler can have a similar moment where he's like, oh my god, I get it now, then he will succeed. It seems like he's still trying to play backyard football. Yes. Where he's that's tr- a great way he's to play. just trying to make plays and he's not thinking about what's happening. Yep. Um, because when he does make plays, he looks really, really good. But it's it's very chaotic almost. Exactly, and that's the thing with me. It's it's not. It doesn't feel organized. No. And and 
chaos isn't sustainable. No. You don't want to sustain that. Right. Because how can you how can you sustain a, a, an organization built on chaos? It doesn't work. And even in the first two games, his the chaotic nature succeeded. Right. Because he was getting out of the pocket, he had run lanes, and he just took off, and he would he would just go and rush for right. you know a hundred yards. But when you like you like you like to harp on when you get film on somebody, and you really see oh well this guy's just running around like a crazy person like let's mm-hmm. just contain him and you know make him throw to DeAndre Hopkins and you know, hope the guy can cover him just and then they don't they don't make yeah. it there one high. Um, so let's hop over to the Giants and Rams. This game was way closer than it needed to be. The Rams looked bad and still won. Um, no, I don't I don't even want to talk about the game. What? <laughs> Did you see that brawl after the game? Uh, no, I didn't. What? I didn't see oh, it. Oh my goodness gracious. This was, this was a four o'clock game. Jalen Ramsey. I was, so this was a four o'clock game. I got so dang bored. <laughs> I went into the other room and started playing Madden with my brother. I'm not even lying to you. <laughs> we started playing Madden. And then I was like, oh cool, Rams won. Like, like it, was so, it was a slog to watch, but I guess I missed a brawl. Uh, Jalen, Jalen Ramsey in Golden Tate had a... Oh. Had, a fist fight at the end of the game in midfield. The both teams got in it. It was crazy. crazy. What you check the video. Okay. It's crazy. Any suspensions? Uh not nothing not yet. yet. Okay. Nothing yet. We'll see, but like you had said, honestly, that was the most exciting part of that game was the fight after the game. Yeah. In that one hit that Jalen Ramsey had on Golden Tate mm-hmm. where he blasted his ass. Yeah. Put him in the grave. But other than that, Giants are terrible. Rams look pretty bad as well. Yeah. They they were lucky they were playing a bad team. If they sure. played a good team like that, right. that's a L. Because the Giants, and this is where you see the difference between the Giants and the Jets, Giants fought the whole game. The Jets at a point always look like they're like, I'm good. Whatever. I think we're good with mm-hmm. this. I want to play with Trevor Lawrence next year. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, the, the yeah, the the Giants just are not a good football team no. without Saquon Barkley. They just can't do anything. I don't even think they were good um, with Saquon Barkley. I, 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 it stinks because like if they had Saquon in this game, they probably could have made it out of it. You think so? I don't know. I, I think to a point, and I mean, I wouldn't have picked him beforehand, but the way the game panned out, like that defense was doing all right, and I mean, but it was just a game of. There's a difference between. A defensive game where they're just getting at each other, they're making big plays, there's turnovers, people are just... Both these offenses just look bad. Yep. They didn't look good at all. This is the worst the Rams offense has been in all of Sean McVay being there. Like, no doubt. Yeah, it's been a bad year for him so far in terms um, of, like you had said, production and how how the offense seems to be organized right. in terms of the rhythm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks very sloppy, it looks very... Unorganized. Sure. It's very, it's very odd to see that. Yeah, uh, and, and I think a lot of that has to do with they don't have really have a running game. Right. That play action. That's our entire uh, offense play right. action. Right. If you if if you don't have a running game, no one's gonna bite on the play action. Yeah, I think what eighty five percent of the plays involve play action. Right. Which is so it's like you gotta get somebody who can run the run. Mm-hmm. Uh, now you got Bills Raiders. This one was tight, Oof. pretty much to the end. Raiders really showing that they're a team that's gonna you know maybe mm-hmm. try and ruin your day if you're yeah. a good football team. Uh, but Josh Allen just looked way too good. Again, that, that dude, he's a he's bad man. He started winning over a little bit. He's he's he can play a little bit. I think when you look at ter- in terms of the biggest arms in the NFL, he's got to be Pat Mahomes and Josh Allen. Yep. That's they they just they know how to show it off and they know how to make it look good. And Stefan Diggs really panned out. I'll tell you what, really Steph- panned out. Stefan Diggs, he he's loving it over mm-hmm. there. He he's is getting the ball, making plays. It. Yep. it looks real good. Yep, it was uh yeah, there was a uh, there was one play I saw Allen, he was I think he was coming off his back foot and he threw like a I think it was maybe thirty or forty yard and sure. he just flicked his wrist. Yeah. Like, That's just so dumb. Yeah. It looked very similar to how Lamar Jackson throws. Sure. Like where he just kinda of flicks his wrist and the ball just keep going. Yeah. It's, it's just so it's unbelievable how you can do that. And this is another one of those things where he is a freak talent where he just has a crazy arm um and i'm hoping that one day it won't just be i have a freak arm i'm gonna throw it up to my best receiver and you know he's he he, i mean he's doing it now and we gotta see him do it against some more consistent teams Mm -hmm. this is probably the best team he's ever so far 
um, and the Raiders. I would say the Rams um, are probably better. You think the Rams are better than the Raiders? I do. Okay. I do. All right. Do they play this week? Uh-huh. Oh, you, you were talking like they played this week. I was like, all right, no, I'm picking. I know you're picking. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> uh, No, I think the Raiders are better than the Rams, but, um, and yeah, that's just a different opinion. But, I mean, it was a tight game pretty much yeah, all the way through. It was. Um, defense. Yeah, Bill's defense, defense. showed up. Defense. Defense right is end. nasty. Uh-huh. Yep. And if, uh, here's my thing with the Bills. If the defense shows up and can minimize the amount of pressure I think Josh Allen has to function under consistently. Mm-hmm. I think you can function in moments, right? Sure. You saw it with the with the Rams, right? When he beat the Rams, he had to come back yeah, and function under pressure, right? Mm-hmm. He had that moment, right? But outside of that, he really wasn't under that much pressure. Right. I think if they can keep the pressurized situations with him low, mm-hmm. keep him out of those situations where he's, he's forced to make good plays, it'll keep him free, keep him open, then he'll have fun making the big plays. Right. The best part about Josh Allen, to me, is that he is mobile, but he does not have to be. Right. He will, if you give it to him, he'll sit in the pocket all day. Mm-hmm. He'll just tear you apart with his rocket arm. Because he'll make he'll make man coverage that's tight look distant because he'll just put it, he'll yeah. just rocket it in the right spot at the right time. And it just looks real good. Yeah, he's a, we'll see. I'm picking them next week. I don't know who they're playing, but I'm, I'm picking them next week. <laughs> All right, let's go Colts Bears. Uh, Colts defense showed up, um, and the Bears just didn't look like that an answer. No, no, I'm disappointed because I picked the Bears. Yeah, we both too. picked the Bears, yep. you know. And they, uh, yeah, they dropped an egg. Yeah. You know, and it was it was kind of funny is they dropped the egg, but this is kind of what we expected the Bears to look like the whole season. Right, and then the you one know, week we think that they right. really turn it around. And then we jump on the bandwagon, and then they, they prove us wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I, Colts defense is looking like. Ridiculous. A top three defense. Um, they allowed 28 rush yards for the game. Yeah, that's that's insane. That's the I, lowest I, since 2009. Granted, they don't have. <laughs> granted, they don't have. A, Bears don't have a running back. Tariq Cohen's on IR. Yep. But like 28 that's, yards. That's nuts. You're that in the NFL. Crazy. That's crazy. Um, almost very similar to the performance that the Steelers had against the Giants in Week One, where they just shut down Saquon Barkley. Like it's just crazy. You were um, minus six yards for the entire game. Something yeah, like something that. Like that. Yeah. Um, and if, if it weren't for Daniel Jones running the ball, they would have had that record. Right. Um, but the Colts just look good on defense. Offense still looks very pedestrian. They're not using a receiver like T.Y. Hilton to his potential. He's currently on my waiver wire <laughs> mm. in fantasy. He's not even on the team right now, and he used to be one of the best receivers in the league. They're not using him very well at all. Uh, Philip Rivers doesn't look great, um, but if that defense can carry that team, you got a like, chance. You got it. Listen, if you only have to on. score over eleven points, yep. you that is that's doable for sure. That is doable. Uh, let's hop over to the Eagles 49ers. Eagles got their first win. Um, this is what the Eagles I think were supposed to look like. Um, granted, that 49ers defense is not good right now because they lost a lot of pieces, um, but. This is, this is what I expected the Eagles to be from the beginning of the year, and I thought they had lost it. Uh, Carson Wentz found his stride. He has no receivers right now. None. It's very similar to the year last year, and he's like, I can't do it anymore. I, I cannot do it anymore. Um, but he made it work for the 49ers. I don't think it's sustainable, though. No, I don't either. And the thing about it is, is the Eagles... That was the right time to play the 49ers because mm-hmm. they could have played exactly how they played there. If the 49ers had uh, Garoppolo. If they had one of their players that was injured. If they had, yeah. Any, you could pick it. Pick sure. any one player that Moster, was injured. Moster, Jimmy Grant, any, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. It would have been, it would have been a blowout. There, yeah. there would have been no chance. Mm-hmm. I mean, George Kittle, 183 receiving yards. And that's with Nick Mullins. Feasted with Nick Mullins. What, I mean, what would he have had with, with Jimmy Garoppolo? Right. What? Yep. So, you know, kudos, you know, congrats to the Eagles. I still hate you. <laughs> but good on the Eagles for, for getting that win, but I'm not sold on them at all. Yeah, me either. Not at um, all. Niners are just reiterating that they need their guys back. Mm-hmm. If they can get their guys back, they'll be all right. But you can't you can't keep winning games with the JV squad. Nope. Uh, let's go Patriots-Chiefs. This one annoyed me because I picked the Patriots. I picked the Chiefs. Um, it hurt my heart, but... And Cam Newton 
decided I'm gonna go get the Rona real quick. <laughs> I'll see you guys in two weeks. Um, and I am 100% convinced if Cam Newton were they on won. the field, they would have won. They would have won. Because um, the Patriots defense was playing really well. Lights out. And then Jarrett Siddham decided. Oh, no, sorry. Brian Hoyer. Brian Hoyer decided in the first half, I'm going to throw some picks and get strip sack. And then Jarrett Siddham said, hey, watch this. And he had a good, he had a good passing touchdown. He looked, he looked pretty good. Um, Bro, on that one drive, but Brian Hoyer, you're you're like a veteran quarterback. He won games with the Browns. How do you take a sack when you're on the ten yard line going into half with no timeouts? I got nothing. Don't don't scold me. I ain't Brian Hoyer. <laughs> no, I'm just <laughs> dude. It's like it, I think the thing with me that really bothered me being a Patriots fan. So many uncharacteristic mistakes. And Julian you know, Edelman. He pissed me off. Yep. He pissed me off. Bro, he leads the league in drops two years in a row. Yep. Oh, come on. You I know you get targeted ball. an asshole of times a game. It's not still, matter, though. It don't. It don't. When you, uh, you're, you're a professional football player. Ball hits you in the hands, you, you catch, catch it. it. I don't man. care if you're a pro bowler. I don't care if you're off the street. There are times when Julian Edelman drops the ball. I'm like, come on, throw me the ball, Bill Belichick. I can catch it. I can, like, yeah. uh, get me on the team. Like, like the pick six that he gave up? That was, I, that was despicable. Man. I want to advocate for interceptions to sometimes be allocated to wide receivers. Yes. That example. That was if the ball assault. hits your hands, stat sheet, it's your INT, buddy. I don't care. I don't care if you had it in your hand and you got hit. I don't care if you had it in your hands and it just went through and pick six. Like, that's on you, buddy. You got to catch a football. And you're setting up your young quarterback to feel like crap because now he's got an INT pick six on his watch. Yep. But it's really on you. Yep. So, you know what I will say this? You know, one of my bigger takeaways is, you know, I'm confident in the Patriots because... Bill Belichick, he's a freaking master. He he's is. He's a master. That game plan that he set up there was ridiculous. We were probably watching the same part where they were explaining how Bill Belichick was setting up his defense to account for uh, Patrick Mahomes. Yep. He rushed three, right? But he had two other guys on the line. He had five on the line. Those two guys that could rush dropped back into zones on the flats, right? They made sure, or in the middle, they just made sure, hey, if you lose your guy, I'll get him. Everyone else was in man coverage. I want to play like that in Madden because I would run that constantly. What? That is super, super smart to do because not only are you saying, Pat Mahomes, go ahead and throw it. Do it. You ain't running. You can try. But, I mean, I mean, granted, he ran a few times, but not much. Um, he only really started getting going at the end of the game when he was given good field position. Yep. Uh, one one play was a bomb play to uh, Tyreek. No, what is our tight end? My God. Oh, uh, Kelsey. Oh my God, Travis Kelsey. Yeah, it was, he took it, ran up the field. That was they're probably they were well, their one big play of the game. Oh, I know what. You're... Their other touchdowns were reverses to their speedy receivers. Mm -hmm. They had to get creative to beat Bill Belichick, yeah. who was already getting creative on them. Um, I'm happy if I'm, I don't know if I'm happy if I'm a Patriots fan. I'm annoyed because, you know, Cam, what are you doing to get the COVID? Yeah, I think if Cam Newton were in this game. It would have been a different outcome. Probably would have been a different yeah, outcome. Yeah, agreed. Um, but we'll Which see. I think I should get credit for, but, I mean. What? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> All right, let's hop over to Falcons Packers. This is exactly how I thought it would be. I said it would be a blowout. It was a blowout. 30-16. Yep. Packers look great. Falcons look bad. I got nothing else for you. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers much. looks like an MVP. I just see a little flex he had. He came with went over. He was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was classic Aaron yeah. Rodgers. Aaron, that was absolutely Aaron Rodgers looks great even without Devontae Adams. Yep. Aaron Jones feasting constantly. Like always. Aaron Jones, Dalvin Cook, and Joe Mixon are looking like the top three running backs in the league right Agreed. now. Agreed. I think Nick Chubb would have been right there, too. If yeah, if he hadn't got hurt. Yeah, which is tough. Um, um, Nick Chubb's yard for carry is crazy. But, yeah, uh, this week, I mean, obviously you had your buys, tight Steelers. They're going to be playing uh, later this year together. Uh, yeah. I believe week seven. Yep. Um, 
Um, so let's, uh, let's run through superlatives real quick. Yeah. So, uh, let's go, uh, next head coach to most likely get fired. Uh, you got Bill O'Brien's out of town. Uh, who's next? I mean, I think there's a lot of coaches that could be on the chopping block. Uh, who do you think's next? You want to, this might surprise you. <clears throat> the Eagles head coach. Doug Peterson, you think they'll get rid of him? Hmm? I think he's fairly safe, but uh, let me hear your reason. Because... That Eagles team has been the same team for the past, ever since the Super Bowl. They've been the exact same team and it's given them the exact same outcomes. It's like, when are you going to have to do something yeah, different? Yeah, that's fair. You supposedly have your franchise quarterback in Carson Wentz. Why are you not giving him the pieces that he needs? Mm. Why is he always in the same situation? Why is that defense always wishy-washy? Why does that team look exactly the same every single year? Right. You're supposed to be getting better and you're not doing that. The only reason why I didn't pick the Jets is because, because or the Giants. Your, your view on it's because my view. Well, that's, that's history. That's sure. what the Jets do. I mean, the Giants just got there. And the Giants just got their head coach. Yeah. Oh, actually, let me take that back. Let me step back. Um, I got Patricia. You. Oh my. Matt gosh. Patricia. That yeah. was, that's that's either one of those, but I'll go Matt Patricia actually. Okay. Um. Uh, I want to. I want to say Adam Gase. I, he's just, <clears throat> he's just a, how are you going to pay that man to be a head coach? He's an alien, man. He's not even a good offensive coordinator. He's just an alien. <laughs> like, uh, he wasn't even a good QB coach. He took all the credit for Peyton Manning coming in and being a success. Peyton Manning, Peyton Manning. You don't get credit for that. Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> so, like, and then after Adam Gase, I mean, we had Brock Osweiler. He ended up being a fluke. Like, I don't know where you think you're getting credit from to be even remotely a good head coach. You had one winning season with the Dolphins when you first took over there, and then all of a sudden, nothing. Um, I mean, I, I, I think, like, I mean, you took my pick. I was going to say Matt Patricia also. But I think Adam Gase is just like, he's on his way out. you got to watch out for that. If Mike McCarthy wasn't in his first year, I'd say Mike McCarthy. Me too. That's bad. Yep. Um, but he's in his first year, I'll give him a pass. Um, now, what was... We already kind of answered this, but let's do What was the uh, biggest upset? Biggest upset? I mean, for me, I'm going to say Cardinals-Panthers. Um, but I think the more we think about it, it's it's very clear. Yeah. That, like, yeah, of course the Colts beat the Bears, because, like, the Colts' defense is really showing who they are. Um, but I think if you were to say, like, I was going to tell you, okay, uh, the Cardinals are going to lose to the Panthers this week, you'd be like, oh, um, then, uh, I mean, yeah, I, I, I think for me, and not necessarily upset per se, but I'd say biggest surprise sure. would be the Browns and the Cowboys. Okay. The Cowboys are, they're bad. Yeah. They're not a good football team. Yeah. They're not a good, and they're able, it was so funny with the Cowboys is they disguise themselves, they make themselves look good with all these, this garbage time stats and, mm -hmm. and points they put up. If you take all these all this garbage time stats, all these all these you know statistics that they create in that time, they would be probably yeah. one of the worst six teams in the league. For sure. Seriously. And they have a stacked roster. I just don't get it. I don't understand. Uh, let's go. Let's go MVP. What you got? You wanna know what I think this week? I think Aaron Rodgers is my is my guy okay. this week because yeah did. Did Russell Wilson do what he was supposed to do? Yeah, but I just think Aaron Rodgers did it better. Yeah. And I think Aaron Rodgers was more consistent this week in the, compared to the following weeks than Russell Wilson was. So I'm going to go, uh, yeah, I'm going Aaron Rodgers. Uh, uh, I, see, I thought you were going to go Tom Brady with five pass touchdowns. Me. Yeah. But, I mean, the way, I think it's the way the whole sure. thing so far, yeah. Um, I'm a three for a week. I'm going to pick a quarterback. I'm gonna go Joe Mixon. I have a feeling you're gonna do Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon at 150 yards, three touchdowns, basically single-handedly helped the Bengals win that game. Joe Burrow just kept them from losing. Yeah. Um, but I mean, Joe Mixon killed it. If I could pick a whole position group, I would say Browns running backs because they, I mean, in the entire running game, 300, 300 yards. So 7.6 yards a carry. But I mean, if I could go one player, I'd go Joe Mixon. I like that. It's good. It's different, too. Yeah. It's different. So, um, let's do best, let's do best one and three team. 
So there's a lot of one and threes. That's one and three team. I'm gonna let you go first. Yeah. I know who my pick is. I know who mine is as well. Go ahead. I'm gonna go with the Chargers. I knew I did. <laughs> I knew I did. But yeah, I'm going with the Chargers. I like uh, Justin. That's his name. Justin Herbert. Yeah. Justin Herbert. I like Justin Herbert. I think, like we had talked about before, you know, him going toe to toe with all those legendary quarterbacks, it really speaks a lot on mm -hmm. his level of play and his ability, not only mentally but physically. Sure. For him to be able to to withstand that sort of pressure mm -hmm. consistently over the past two or three weeks. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. That's impressive. I'm gonna go Chargers as well. That offense is good. Defense is good. Defense just didn't show up. Um, but that's uncharacteristic. They're a good defense. Mm -hmm. Um, they should not be one and three. Nope. They play more like a three and one team than a yeah, one and three team. Agreed. Uh, but you know they gotta find a way to close out those games because at the end of the day, if you don't get those wins, it doesn't matter exactly. what team you look like. And that's it. Should have, would have. Right. It. Yep. Um, I mean the other one and three teams. I mean you got the Dolphins, you got the Broncos, you got the Vikings, you got the Lions, you got the Cowboys, you got the Jaguars. Um, none of those guys really excite me. If I were to pick somebody other than Chargers, I. Probably say the Cowboys, Me too. Um, just because they're constantly in games. Um, so, yeah. And then, uh, any other any other superlatives coming to mind? I got nothing. Okay. I'm excited for Week Five. I am too. It's gonna be good. Well, alrighty, y'all. That was the Week Four update, sort of recap. My man Andrew. Tune in on Thursday to see our Week Five picks, and we'll also go over the Week Four tally, see how we did in terms of our uh, our win loss totals. Um, and again, we'll see you next time on Thursday, and then we'll catch you on the following Tuesday to go over Week Five. All right, y'all. Till next time, we'll see you. See ya. Peace.